the Constitutional Convention was in a deadlock over how large and how small the states could represent equally. Some delegates just gave up and left. Then on June 28, 1787, 81-year-old Ben Franklin spoke up shortly after the U.S. Constitution became a reality. James Madison recorded what he said. Groping as it were in the dark to find political truth, and scarce able to distinguish it when presented to us, how has it happened, sir, that we have not hereto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights? In the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of the danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed the frequent instances of the superintending providence in our favor. And have we now forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings, that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I also believe that without his concerning aid, we shall succeed no better than the builders of Babel. Ben Franklin warned the Constitutional Convention in 1787 of what the future held in his address on the dangers of a salaried bureaucracy. Sir, there are two passions which have a powerful influence in the affairs of men. These are the love of power and the love of money. And what kind of men will strive for this profitable thing? tearing to pieces the best of characters. It will not be the wise and the moderate, the lovers of peace and good order, the men fittest for trust. It will be the bold and the violent, the men of strong passions and of selfish pursuits. These will thrust themselves into your government and be your rulers. Besides these evils, there will always be a party for giving more to the rulers, that the rulers may be able to, in return, give more to them. All history informs us, there has been in every state and kingdom a constant kind of warfare between the governing and the governed, the one striving to obtain more for its support, and the other to pay less. And this has alone occasioned great convulsions, actual civil wars, ending either in the dethroning of princes or the enslavement of the people. Franklin concluded, we see the revenues of princes constantly increasing, and we see that they are never satisfied, but always in want of more. The more the people are disconnected with the oppression of taxes, the greater need the prince has of money to distribute among his men, and to pay the troops that are to suppress all resistance and enable him to plunder at pleasure. There is scarce a king in a hundred who would not, if he could, follow the example of Pharaoh, get all of his people's money, then their lands, and then make them and their children servants forever. Franklin also added, There is a natural inclination of mankind to kingly government. It sometimes relieves them from aristocratic domination. They would rather have one tyrant than five hundred. It gives more of the appearance of equality among citizens, and that they like. Ben Franklin continued, I am apprehensive, therefore, perhaps too apprehensive, that the government of the states may in future times end in a monarchy. A king will the sooner be set over us.